That sounded nice. It did. How hot is my coffee still? It's probably pretty hot. It's hot. All right, Jills. Hot as it was yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> Kick us off. All right, welcome everyone to the. Oh, I'm gonna start that over. Re-kick it off. <laughs> Re-kick it off. All right. Up crease. Up crease. Stop. <laughs> I said that twice, and it's ruined my whole life. I oh. said it, and that one time from the board too. Oh hell yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Up crease. That's the new word for the day. Welcome to the Between the Spokes podcast and Anovia Wheels podcast. I'm Giles. I'm Sam. And uh, yeah, we're from Anovia Wheels. You <clears> can <throat> tell. And uh, we got some pretty cool wheels. We got single piece. Rotary Forge, multi-piece Forge, mm -hmm. a lot of cool stuff on the way. A lot of, literally on the way. Yeah. Some of it's actually in the warehouse that we're really? going to launch soon. Hell yeah. yeah. No, I know <clears throat> if, if you guys have been following Anovia for a while that uh, we've had some designs that have been, you know, trying to get here for a while. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I feel like this it's just not a never year ending. for supply chain. <laughs> it's just if you work in supply chain, cycle. I'm sorry, it's probably been weird. Yeah, it's a, it's a super awkward time to do anything right now. Um, and we've been trying to get these new wheels launched, I'd say for about a year. Yep. Um, yep. But they're finally on the way. They're finally, they're real, they're made, they're on a boat. Some of them in the warehouse, but you know, we want to make sure that there's enough there. It's the White Titans that the are in White the White Titans. Yeah, yeah, that's gonna be sick. Anyway, <clears throat> how's your weekend? It was really good. Yeah. Uh, as you know, we we're drifting this weekend. Yeah. So, yeah, Saturday was was fun. Um, it was a good event. It was weird when it rained. It was super weird. Because it wasn't, like, when it was drizzling, it, w it was like, okay, it's just a little slippery. But then my car was just understeers so bad. That's weird. So bad. Like, I was at full <laughs> lock going straight. And... I think it's the tires that I have in the front are, they're really, really good when it's not raining. Sure. When it's raining, I don't <laughs> think that tread design is great. I'm not going to name names, but I'm <laughs> not going to probably ever run those on my car as like a... As a front. Yeah. Dang. Or like if any car I have is like all around car because in the rain, it was just bad. Damn. But... That's, that's shocking actually. Yeah. But it was good. So I feel like I've had those on my cars before and they did okay, but I guess I've never really driven in the rain like that. Yeah, that makes sense. It was yeah, it was really weird. It was really scary. I was huh. just like, oh god. Yeah, god, I know god. it was uh, it was very interesting because it kind of started raining in the morning a little bit, but like everyone was running the track, so it stayed pretty warm and dry. So like, really didn't make a difference no. as far as I could tell. But when we came back from lunch and track went cold for an hour or so, it was slippery. It was like a freaking ice rink out there. I I felt mm. like I had a high horsepower car for a little bit because yeah. I'd like just touch the gas and it want to like kill me. Well, and then. <laughs> Once it started to dry out a little bit, it was like circle track racing because it wasn't driving the line you wanted to. It was just staying in the groove. Yeah. I was like, where's it dry? Okay, yep. okay. We're going over here now. Yeah, that was a, that was a pretty interesting time. <laughs> it was like, it, it started, you know, we came back and it was like, oh my God, you can't even like touch the brake. No. You can't like touch your gas. Like bad. you literally just like kind of, you know, shifted into there and just kind of work with what you got. And then it started to dry up and it was like, well, some spots were wet, some spots were dry. And then I just couldn't <laughs> even get the car sideways because I was like, oh no, it's still gonna be super slippery. Yep. And I was driving like a little baby. At the end of the day, it was good though, because it was yep. dry. And I was trying to get ride-alongs in and I pull into the pits and some people wanted ride-alongs and <laughs> they weren't there. And I was like, oh. <laughs> Yo, we got like half hour here. And yeah, try to get like all the driving in in like the last hour. Well, Luke, finally, like Luke Rolf was there. Yeah. And he was like third in line or whatever yeah. for ride alongs. And I was like, listen, Just dog, <laughs> no one else is here. You either got to make this choice to get in or I'm going to go by myself. Hell yeah. Um, uh, Luke went for a ride with me too. And dude, he was, he was giddy. That was awesome. It was, and then we, we went off roading a little bit. That oh, was, really? That was interesting. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we uh, probably hit the biggest drop off of the, the thing oh, over that there. One, yeah. yeah. And uh, the, Rear view mirror fell off, so if that that's says anything. <laughs> that's when Luke got in my car and he was like, uh, he was under the assumption that our cars are the same motor. Yep. yep. And I was like, no, this one's a little faster. <laughs> and we did the first lap and he was like, holy shit, this thing is faster. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Yeah. It, Ryan, you should have jumped so. in for a ride along. I was thinking about it. You should have. <laughs> All right, next time you have to, or we're going to write you up. I felt. I felt so bad because we had uh, one of uh, our ambassadors, one of our first ambassadors oh, yeah, up he was, there. He was so Sin. stoked. Yeah, he's such a cool dude. And he was so excited. And he's like, yeah, can I get around? I was like, yeah, let's go. I, I was struggling so oh, really? bad. Was I, it when it was raining? It was like right. It was like in between. So it was like I oh, couldn't even get the car sideways because I'm just like, That's, I'm like doing things. I'm like, try, I'm like, dude, I'm so sorry. I'm just not in it right now. And he's like, dude, it's fine. It's, it's like fine. Josh. Josh <laughs> I just jumped in my so bad. Josh jumped in my car at the same time. And I'm like, dude, I'm sorry. Jump back when it's dry. This is not good. <laughs> Uh, everyone loved his bag Tesla, by the way. Dude, that thing is sick. That is very dope. He has been traveling like every state. He's like 
44 out of like 50 or something like that. Yeah. And he's like hitting up in that thing and he's just like living out of it, camping out of it. That's cool. Well, That's speaking awesome. of like, because he built that car very much for him. Yeah. What do you want to talk about today? We're going to talk about building our cars for us or building your car for yourself yeah. and not for anybody else because that's stupid. Which this sounds like a really no duh situation. But I feel like, you know, I even find myself like falling for it in some points, you know, yeah. for like certain things. And it's like, okay, did I really want to install that part or am I just doing it because like that's what I've seen everybody else doing, you know? Right. And, uh, you know, I think it's really e it's a lot easier to see that from an outside perspective when you when you're watching someone build their car and like you know when they're posting about it on like instagram or stuff like that and you're like eh, that's not really like i've never really seen you do yeah. something like that before you know so outside perspective is you know a lot more clear um but like i said it, it's it's pretty easy to to fall in for it like so especially with the amount of social media impact and stuff that i think there there's one platform that i feel like falls into this and what is that the most i would say the frs brz Really? I, okay. Yeah. So because I think that chassis is becoming a little bit cooler and cooler as people are starting to like really understand yeah. what it's capable of, uh, especially on like TikTok. Oh yeah. The builds are starting to get just clones of each other, <laughs> and it's I don't know. It like and it's not in a way where it's like okay, this is how you do it to make it look cool. It's like this is it. This is it. This is it. And the underglow, like that's always yeah. the the thing, like a, a kind of a unique body color, something like that. Right. But I, that's a platform I don't see people like jumping out and doing things on their own that much. Yeah, it's very cookie cutter. And I, I think it, you know, when it, what it reminds me of too. And I think I had this talk with like Alex at one point, and he kind of brought up a good point. It was like you look back at like the like the NA Miatas. For, yeah. for a while there, everyone was picking up NA Miatas and they were modding the crap out of them. They were throwing a body kit on it. They were dumping it. Like everyone was doing the same thing. And like, yep. because they were so affordable, the parts were out there like crazy. And it's like, they're cheap to modify. Can't really say that much anymore. Yeah, <laughs> it's no like sure. NA Miatas are like 15K. But like, you know, there were so many out there and so many people were doing things to them. And it was like, it did become kind of the same thing where like every build was starting to look very yeah. similar. But what that did was eventually push those people who didn't want to do that to go like, all right, I got to be different. And the strive to be like different was like so much that you started seeing just like these most ridiculous things coming out on these cars. It was like, you know, all the interior panels, like people were like redoing the interiors, you know, people were doing like crazy, you know, specs on the wheels, like literally as much like out of the box as they could think, even if it didn't even really make yeah. sense to the build, it was like, no, it's different. So. Is that where Sad Boys came from? I don't think so. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> that that could be a whole episode on its own. That whole uh, that whole spiel. But I think I think we're seeing a similar thing with the FRS BRZ platform right now, especially with like the newer gen coming out and a lot mm -hmm. of like the diehard like fans of that platform being able to hop to that new gen right away. Um, you're you're seeing a lot of those first gens like being ditched for pretty cheap. Yeah. And you know, in a few years, I think those are going to be like the the 240s and the Miatas of the world because they're a rear wheel drive plat rear wheel drive platform that's generally affordable. Like that's what it was meant to be an affordable sports coupe. Yep. Um, and you know that's what people like. That's why I went and picked one up. It was like I could afford it. I could afford to modify it. Yep. And there's a ton of parts out there. But you know, a lot of people are like, oh, those are the parts that I can choose from, which is fine. You know, yeah. that's what you want to go about. But yeah, I think it was really eye opening when we went to Gatlinburg last year, and they got to the all through the categories with the trophies and everything, and they literally said like, this is the biggest bucket of cars and that was the frs brz platform it was like 72 vehicles Jeez. in that just one group and i was like holy crap how do you even yeah how do you even be you know have a unique build at that point well it's the like 350z's for a while yeah was getting pretty bad where it's like chassis mount wing weird arrow <laughs> big wheels yep and like that was it. And like some of them look really good. Yep. I don't like chassis mount rank wings. And if you have one, sorry. But it was like, it was this weird phase where it was like, oh, everyone is doing these the same. Yeah. And then if you drifted it, you had to put the biggest bash bar on the front possible. <laughs> like it looked like a locomotive, like with yeah. like a cattle like guard thing. But right. I, have you ever kind of fallen in the trap of like building a car in a way that you didn't want to, but like, the internet wanted you to um i would say it's weird i was yes and no 
Because, like, at the end of the day, I still did what I wanted to with the car. But, like, I fell for the trap of, like, taking a lot of those, like, comments to, like, heart. Which yeah. is, like, you should not do, like, like yes, you can, like, read your comments and stuff like that. Like, the, the, there's no issue in that. But, like, don't, you know, don't dwell on it. And if someone's like, oh, that's stupid, don't do that. Like, yeah. And it's, like, if you truly think it looks good and it's, like, you know, makes sense to the build and, like, what your end goal is for the car... Like, like then do it yeah like exactly. you know don't take that to heart and it was like I, I i made it was funny i made a tiktok a couple weeks ago kind of like playing off of that and uh i think that's what really kind of why i wanted to talk about this today it was like i it was like i put that the big uh big country labs wing yeah. on the rx8 yeah. i love the wing i really do mm-hmm. um i just have some fitment issues with it and i want to get those sorted out to make sure that it like stays secure because I, yeah, I so think the it, 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 it kind of like moves around too much for my taste and it was a prototype bracket yeah like, you know it was the first literally the prototype bracket that they sent me so i was like no no like bad like yeah. you know nothing bad on big country labs you it's gotta just, figure stuff it out is what it is it you was don't know first, what it is yeah it was the first it of its kind yeah. so um i want to do some things like maybe 3d print some parts that like would help like secure it better um but in the meantime i took it off and dude ever since i took the wing off and like put the new wheels on the car and everything like that people are like oh thank god you took that wing off that was so stupid and then the other half of the people are like oh i miss it you know that kind of yeah. stuff and so i made like a TikTok, like kind of joking about that it was like when i had the wing on the car all the comments were just negative. take it off take it all off negative, take it off. all negative yep. like, stupid take it off outdated too big like ruins the car and as soon as i take it off the comments entirely switch yeah. i'm like dude you, like <clears throat> you can't win you, you can't yeah you no. can't win it's not like i really care so i made like a, a tiktok like kind of poking fun at that like oh you know at the comments and like i took it off and what like, the comments were and, and dude people were just like you gotta build your car for yourself man like don't get i'm like i know that's like the that's joke i'm doing the, the yeah. joke like <laughs> went way yeah, over guys, your head guys. and uh um dude that that blew up and like i, I couldn't believe you know the, the good like amount of good support like yeah build your car for yourself who cares what people think it's your car is like cool that's that's good that's a good mentality to have i just want you to know that i know that too <laughs> like, yeah and it's a joke like, that's what i'm doing here <laughs> um but yeah it, i think it's super easy to get wrapped up in that and and i guess i'd never fallen for it was like oh i need to go buy this part for my car because the internet said i needed to um you know because that's what they think looks good kind yeah. of thing it was like no at, at the end of the day I, I'm, I would say that I'm, I'm pretty confident that I, I have built those cars for myself in the way that I wanted to. Like yeah. when I went and bought the RX-8, I already had the intentions of, you know, doing the Lions kit wide body. I had the intentions of getting some multi-piece wheels, doing yep. air, like doing all these things that I've never done before. That was the intention of the car. It's yeah. like, I wanted, this is like a car first for me. I've never had a car in air, never had a car with wide body on it. I've never owned a rotary. I've never wrapped anything before. So I wanted to wrap the car. Yep. And that's what the, that's what the intention of the build was. Yeah. And it's you have a bunch of firsts and it's like the first for you. It's right. not like, Oh, I'm going to do this cause it'll look good. And yeah. the internet will see it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I don't know. It can be a dangerous game because like, I think different people are very sensitive in different ways to what others are saying oh absolutely like you guys can tell me my car looks stupid i don't give a shit like (laughs) whatever but like um it some people it really does matter right and it's important to remember to build it for you because i've seen people 100 percent build a car and they think it's for them and i'm like they're they're totally doing this because like their friends whatever influencing them and i think every time they've got it done they've basically sold the car because they're just like they're just like, I don't want it. Yeah, this isn't what I want. I want something that I get something new and the cycle repeats itself. Yep. And I'm like, man, like just it's really unfortunate. Turn off yeah. the internet for a bit and like <laughs> just like think of what you want to do. Yeah. But it's easy to fall into that trap too. Oh, because absolutely. It's it's tough to read those negative comments and like Yeah. Oh, I mean I don't like it's this. like, yeah, you can just as much as people say like, Oh, don't you know, don't worry about it, don't listen to what they're saying, it's like at the end of the day, it's like it's it's hard to do that yeah at the end you know because it's you see it no matter what like unless unless you completely distance yourself from social media it's really hard. it's really hard and yeah. that's just kind of one of the side effects to it and you know you can think of social media whatever you want i i do enjoy it i do enjoy being on like the platforms and interacting with you know yeah. my audience and stuff like that and fi's audience and anobi's audience like i i enjoy that are there going to be shitty comments in there you know oh, yeah. yeah absolutely that's the state of the internet but like you know I would say like me and you 
that's what we grew up to know. It's like yeah. we, we grew up knowing that we saw the birth of like everything of like, yeah, you're going to have the shitty stuff and you're going to have the good stuff. You yeah. just kind of, you know, just, just sweep a, that under yeah. the rug. But, you know, people who, you know, I would say like younger enthusiasts and stuff who, you know, don't have that same mentality. Like, oh, my God, that person's upset with me. It's like, who okay, cares? You don't know that yeah, person. You don't, yeah. You're and, never going to talk to that person. Yeah. Like, <laughs> And if, if you do know them, like talk it out if it really matters. Yeah. Like the... I think the thing too is when you're building a car, it's a lot of money and you're yeah. spending your own money. Exactly. So like do it the way you want to do it because ultimately you're the one who's going to enjoy it. Right. And um, it, it, that sometimes it means that maybe there's a, a part that's way more expensive than what you need and that's the cool internet part. Yep. But you don't need that carbon fiber whatever. Yeah. So you don't have to get it. And, like, if people are like, oh, you should have got this one because it's, like, the one to get. Yeah. Like, you should have got the titanium exhaust or 350Z and whatever. Right. Because that's the one everyone told <laughs> that's me. Because that's what like, everybody gets. It's yeah. Like, like you yeah, you well, don't have to. And, like, yeah. sometimes it's good to do it different. And go into it knowing that someone's going to disagree with you. Oh, absolutely. And that's fine. Uh, yeah. You're not going to appease everybody. And I think that's the, the biggest thing to know is that, like, your build is not going to please everyone. If it did, it's probably going to look yeah. pretty basic. Like, I mean, there's, there's things that you know out there and like in the car scene right now like modification types and like styles and stuff that i just don't i don't vibe with like that's right. not my thing do i go out and actively comment like this thing sucks no i don't think like, I've ever... i don't care i don't like yeah. if I, I see a guy i'm like cool that is that that person's build i'm gonna leave it at that is it my thing nah but it's cool like yep and, and it, i don't want that to be conceived either as like oh like the respect all builds things i think that has gotten honestly in my opinion blown Oh, way out of proportion. I think that started as a really good thing of like, hey, like, don't just go shit on people, to, in the, you know, for the sake yeah. of shitting on people. But uh, do your research. Yeah, I, I, I would say that like just because you can doesn't mean you should no. kind of thing. I talked about that in a, a recent video, too, of like I made my stupid mistakes when I was younger. I was like, oh, I can remove this vent. I can remove this. That means it's going to get spray painted. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like. It, yeah, and that that's the other thing too, especially if like you've done cars and stuff, and like you see someone that doing that, maybe it's one of their first builds or yeah. I, I don't know. It's just like they're new to the to the scene. Um, it's kind of your job to make sure that they are like they're getting the knowledge they need. Yeah, if they're doing something wrong, don't be like you're stupid. Be like, hey, you know, I did this before. This is how I did it. You might yeah. find it easier to do this. Or, like, approach it in a different way. Like yeah. it's the same message. That's what I mean. Yeah. You don't have to like go shut them down and like, you know, make them feel like this big, but yeah. like, yeah, if you want to be that person that kind of help you guide them in the right direction. Yeah. So. And if you're not going to be the person to guide them in the right direction, don't really like say anything. Just be like, okay, cool. I'm going to yeah, go just, do my thing. Yeah. Yeah. Just go to Unless the... they're being like a total tool about it. Then, then maybe, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I've, I've seen that happen plenty of times where, you know, people show up and they're like cavaliers with like blast pipes and no hood and, yeah. uh, you know, lights all over the place. And they're like, I got a sick build, man. It's like, you got to, uh, yeah. And then they're just like doing burnouts in the parking lot. And why is it always those scene. types? It, of it is always those. They always have a PA system. They always have. Yeah. A PA and it's system. always like this <laughs> car that is just like an auto zone special. <laughs> it's literally like, what it's it is. so weird. Yeah. And they're wearing like, uh, usually it's a t-shirt from like one of those like red bubble places where it's like, it's oh, like it's a, just like some like, like cheesy, a gritty yeah. t-shirt, yeah. but it's not actually a gritty t-shirt. <laughs> yeah. And they're, yeah. Or it's like a, it's just like a turbo and it's just like blow me on it. Yeah. yeah like yes. that kind of stuff. Or yeah. built, not bought. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So don't be that person. <laughs> and I had an encounter with one of those recently. And it's just like, oh no. I don't. It never turns out good. It's like you try to be nice and it's just, it, it, they make it really difficult. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's. I don't want to sound like a piece of shit, but like my God, <laughs> I, know. I don't know if it's just a Wisconsin thing, but I feel like we see so many of or like those kind of cars and stuff that just show up, and it's like, I respect the the ambition, but the, the execution just not. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I just I'm asking lots of questions in my head, yeah. and none of them are getting answered. And yeah. yeah, it's it's weird, but it. What, I don't know. The other thing too, when you're going and doing or building your car, building for yourself. I think the biggest thing is like have a vision from the beginning. Yeah. You don't have to have a parts list of like, this is everything I'm going to buy, yeah. but have an idea or sometimes you'll end up with a, a weird like assortment of parts that yeah. they'll work together, but it doesn't maybe like look like a vision. It's just a whole bunch of aftermarket parts on a car. Right. 
And that it, it sounds easier, like, oh, yeah, no doubt I'll have a vision. But it's harder because the, once you start getting the outside influence, it can sway you different ways. Yeah. And you don't really want to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I think that's that was one of the hardest parts, too, for me. It's like, you know, I think for the RX-8 especially, it was like kind of seeing everything come together because it's still a bit of an odd platform and a lot of the aftermarket stuff that was out there is kind of like hard to get. Um, and so it was like seeing like the lines get like available. I was like, cool, like that, that's cool. But like, it didn't have like the side skirts to it. Yep. And I'm like, well, they really need side skirts. And then I was like, well, it doesn't really have like a front lip. And I'm like, well, I'm going to buy this Saibon carbon lip for it. And then I was like, shit, it doesn't fit with the over fenders. So I was like having a tough time, like really trying to piece everything together of like what side skirts am I going to get all this kind of stuff. And then and I did kind of go out and ask. So it's like, yeah, you can ask for like some like just direction of like, hey, I'm looking for this style of yep. side skirt, like what brands are out yeah. there right now. Um, and I was actually able to find like a, an actual decent pair of side skirts that look really good. Yeah. And I enjoy them. But and it's like there's no no issue with that. Like go ask like for help of like, hey, this is what I'm looking for. But don't just be like, hey, what should I do to the car? Yeah. Like I, you know, unless that's like what you do and like you're building, you know, a car for your audience in a sense. Like I think that could be kind of cool. Like the I think you know I've kind of I've always thought it'd be fun to do that. Yeah. I feel like, like FI like as like yeah like as a video series like hey, you know give you guys the chance to build a car or have input on a car like i think that's totally fine but yeah. as like a personal car of mine i would i wouldn't do no. that i was more looking for like i said just like this is what i'm looking for can someone help me yeah. find it <laughs> when, um when you're going through your whole side skirt thing i remember uh there's a drift day there's a g35 and a g35 and the it was a coupe and the guy uh kind of went off track and his side skirt fell and it was like metal scraping on the ground and i was like metal side skirt that's weird was it rain gutters it was a rain gutter. oh no, but it was oh, no. Was, i i couldn't i didn't know until that <laughs> happened and yeah it was yeah that's a huge thing in like the mark four community yeah it was just a straight up i remember like, dakota, rain gutter. dakota when he had his gti he was Sorry, he was part of this like, like a b oh, oh google's b. reminding me of all my photos from last year oh hell yeah it's probably because it's my dog's birthday Oh, happy birthday, Stanley. Yeah. Um, no, he's like, yeah, I remember when Dakota had his GTI, he was in this Mark IV community. He's like, bro, I don't know what it is about the Mark IV community, but there are some odd ducks in there, and especially on like these Facebook groups and stuff. And he would just send me like screenshots of like the stuff that they were doing. And one of them was like the rain gutter side skirts were like a huge thing because it's just like a boxy yeah. little car. And it's just a straight shot. Just drop just, that down a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it was, like, that is... That's so funny. I don't know about that. I was like, that is weird. I mean, they're durable. I, guess. I mean, I guess they're cheap. Yeah. <laughs> just, just go to Home Depot, grab some new side skirts. Remember when the you were you remember the Home Depot uh, like garage door lip being a thing? No. It was like before the Easy Lip thing was out, which is just like a three M like weather stripping that you stick on. Yeah. To the no, bottom I, side of your car. Yeah. It was like you. Uh, it was this whole thing going around like the internet for a while. It was uh, you go to like Home Depot and like the bottom stripping of like your garage door yeah it has like a 3m adhesive on it and you just trim it to length well people were like just making like little lips oh. and splitters out of it for like three bucks and i was oh. like oh eh, I, I tried it it didn't work no it like didn't it didn't work. look good or didn't stay on it, it didn't stick to anything uh, <laughs> yeah that would that's not that's not good for uh for lip <laughs> anyway um yeah i you know i think today it's super tough to to kind of keep that distance away and that from that influence of the internet and the comments and stuff like that because like i would say now more than ever the car community is super involved with one another's builds like whether yeah. that shows social media like you know just talking to each other like get like knowing each other because like you know i talk to people all the time from like different parts of the country now it's like i would have never you know talked to this person or like even gotten to know them or know their <clears throat> build their car like without social media. So it's like having that sort of um, communication with one another has made it super difficult to yeah. kind of just, you know, keep that separate. Yep. So what I always see, not always, I often see is people want to do something different mm -hmm. and you got to be unique, got to do something different. The, what I found to be one of the great, like most for sure ways to be different is to not do anything really crazy. Like, cause a lot of people are doing crazy stuff. Yeah. Like, <laughs> if you say stay stock body, get some factory arrow, which yep. is usually pretty expensive, yep. but 
factory aero, good fitment, nice wheels, you'll stand out. Which yeah. like, in good paint, like maybe respray like a cool, yeah. unique color or something like that, but not going crazy helps you stand out more. Right. Because everyone's just going absolutely like batshit. I remember we were on our way back from MA Performance last week and we saw that like 350Z on the oh, highway. What, well, who is he with? There's an, uh, was it a BMW that he was driving Yeah, it was like with? E46, I think. Yeah. yeah. It was like this super simple 350Z. It was like silver. It was on like coils, super good fitment. I think it was like Cosmos wheels or something yeah, like that. Yeah, Cosmos had like a nice exhaust. Nice exhaust to it. And like, yeah, just a little bit of like, I think what it was like, just simple yeah. arrow to it. I was like, that's really nice. And we're all like, whoa. <laughs> like, Yo, super clean 350. Wonder, and we're how, like. How funny would it be if that guy in the car just saw you mean Dakota all in the car? Like, <laughs> yo, he's like, whoa, the whole sick. FI team is like, right <laughs> we're like just cruising and yeah. it's like beamed up. Yeah. And I think it, that was so funny because we're just like, oh my God, it's not like a crazy, like wild 350Z. It's actually like a, I think you said it, it was like, that is like a super clean build from yeah. like eight years ago. Yeah. And I was like, damn. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Just like good fitment low to the ground subtle exhaust and clean body lines i, I don't think it had a wing on it or anything nope, i was no like it was, it was all shaved it was good paint it was, and yeah it looks super good yeah and, it, and that's like I'm, we're not going to tell you how to build a car here but like if you're yeah, listening but like to it's this, like that kind of thing that like, yeah. it triggered something here it was like damn that's different like, like it, that's that's not what i normally see yeah and if like well, the reason i'm kind of saying this because if you want to you should build it for you and if yeah. for you you want it to be cool and stand out don't look at like just my advice, like build it for you. If you want to do something absolutely crazy, you can, but like look at what everyone else is doing and then like go back to like the more of the OEM plus stuff because yeah. after time, that's always the look people are looking for. Like you look at classic muscle cars, yeah. everyone wants like that OEM or the factory option stuff. Yep. Uh, and then now you look at 240s, you know, a lot of the JDM stuff. Everyone wants that OEM arrow, like that that yeah. sort of stuff. Yeah, I mean, I think there will always be the endless cycle of like stuff coming back into popularity and falling yep. out of popularity. I mean, we've seen it in the, even the last 10 years, stuff rise and fall and rise and fall. And I, and I think that is an important point. It's like, you can do the crazy wide body, crazy arrow stuff if that's what you truly love. Yeah. Don't do it just because everyone else is doing it. And I don't want it to be, you know, considered like, Oh, well, Gels and Sam just like the simple, clean OEM Plus builds. Like, no, I like a lot of different yeah. stuff. It's just like when 95% of the cars are crazy wide body, big wing, you know, camel wrap, wide wheel kind of things. It's like, I like to maybe see something I, a little different. And it's, you know, when you, you can obviously, you can really tell when it's like, yeah, I just did it because they did it because they did it and we all did it. And now we're all, the all same. of our cars look same, the same. same so it's different. like, it's like, yeah, don't be afraid to like do that kind of stuff. So if that's what you truly enjoy, yeah. but if you don't, you don't really enjoy that and you do enjoy more like the clean, subtle looks or, you know, maybe s some other style, go do that. You mm -hmm. know, don't, don't feel the need to do something just because that's where you, you see the direction of the scene yeah. per se, like or, going. Or if you have the, the skill set and know-how like to like do something to push the scene in a, in a different way. Yeah. Like 100% do that because you're going to have people against you. But sometimes, um, like the cool thing about TikTok is you find some people like that guy doing that wide body uh, Porsche that's all metal yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Like that's the sort of stuff that's like, damn, that's crazy. I watched every one of those videos. It's really cool. It was super cool progress. to see that like uh, start to finish. But the comments the, at first were just like, you're stupid. Like, yeah. I can't believe you're ruining this car. Yeah, right. Like, and all he's that like, stuff. he's like, I the dude does it for a living. Like yeah. he works in like a, like a, a shop doing that stuff. Like, I don't know if you catch any of his other videos too, but like they restore like old Porsches yep. to like factory, like specs and stuff like that. And he's like, no, oh, this is my personal car. I want to do this. I had a vision for it and it turned out fucking killer. Oh, so it turned out so good. He's still working on it. Like doing some like little things. He's like working on a diffuser right now yeah. or something like that. But yeah, I, I love watching that stuff. And then I, it kind of brings up, a, I guess, kind of a, additional point with all of this too is that i watch a lot of all those videos like anytime they come out and yeah like, i look forward to the next one and a lot of people and uh, you know it, it happened with it happens with everything people are like when's the next video coming out when's the oh, next update yeah. oh my god you've been working on this thing for like what two days yeah. come on and it's yeah. like bro he's doing this like from scratch like he's literally like hand forming these like metal parts to like a one-off body kit that he designed like, yeah it's gonna take a bit and I, I think we've all become accustomed to like you know 
watching stuff on YouTube and, and things like that, where it's like, oh, got the brand new BRZ. Oh, next day it's wide bodied. Oh, next day it's bagged. Yeah. Next day, and it's like in a week, the whole car is built. Well, that's because either that's their job or they did this over three months. Right. The and, videos. and I remember specifically when we were doing the RX-8 build that it was like, holy crap. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, we had like a, obviously like a schedule to like, you know, get filming done. We wanted to get the videos out. We were doing a video every week. And I'm just like, I was dying. I was yeah. like, cause like, you know, shock you know believe it or not you know we do more than just videos here like i'm, I'm the marketing operations this is a person small little part for fitment industries yeah. like you know it's in charge of like all the marketing stuff and it's like that is that is my job the yeah. the videos the car builds all that stuff is like additional to my key position yep. here and, and i know it's really weird to hear and kind of think about but you know so, so like taking you know eight hours a day on top of already an eight hour work day to go work on a, a vehicle like that. I was like dying. I was yeah. like, holy crap. And you know, it did cause me to, to rush things. And at the end of the, the series that we filmed, I was like, I don't like the way that turned out. Fitment's not as good as I wanted it to be specifically in the front. Cause I'm mm -hmm. like, I had to get spacers ordered like that day. Yeah. And I'm like, the multi-piece wheels won't be built for another few months. I'm just like, we got to do something. And like, everything was just kind of like together. And I said, I'm like, I'm just not super happy with it. And, yeah. and now literally a full year later, I'm finally starting to be happy with the car and where it's sitting at. So it's like, you know, don't feel the pressure to get your build done either. If it's going to take time, it's going to take yeah. time. Like who cares if the other people are waiting for it? It's like, I want it to make, or I want to make sure that it's good. And you should want to do it make on sure your time it's good. because it's your time. Like it's yeah. just like, <laughs> like get it done when it, when you can and, and do it right. Cause yeah, if they're not offering to come over and help with it, who cares? Yeah. Cause r rushing anything just never, it never works. Yeah. It, and it, I definitely experienced that firsthand with that RX-8. And like I said, almost a full year later, I'm still like so buttoning some things up. This, um, and we're probably kind of getting towards the, the end here, but let, let's maybe conclude with like, like some of our builds yeah. that we're working on. Cause everyone's probably like listening to this forever and like thinking of their own things and we're telling them what to do. Let's just talk about what we're doing. So you have a 240 yep. and there's a very, there's a lot of different ways people can take 240s. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there is. Have you thought of like what you want to do with it and kind of like why and like where you want to go? I'm honestly still trying to piece it together. Mm -hmm. I, I, when I grabbed the RX-8, I had like this vision of everything already. Uh, with the 240, I've honestly just been enjoying driving it the way that it is and, mm -hmm. and experiencing everything and and learning how to drift and, and all that kind of stuff where it's like, I just maybe want to play it out for a year and then use that time to to maybe plan and like vision stuff out. Yeah. Um, I think end of the road, I, I don't want to do anything like crazy. Like I, I don't want to do like an over fender kit, I don't believe, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I just wanted to, you know, maybe freshen up the body kit. Like I, I've been working on, you know, repairing those side skirts. Yep. I, I refiberglass those. Um, they fit decent now. Yeah. Um, they're all in one piece. Yeah. Uh, you know, they still they're look solid. a little rough. Like the car still looks a little rough, but it's like, <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> I think at the end of the day, just have, you know, just kind of like a clean, simple ish 240. Yeah. So like right now, the main goal is like just clean stuff up and eventually like refresh the body kit maybe get some different front fenders um, and then just respray the car and get it looking nice yeah. or, and nice enough to not be able to, or not be afraid to beat it up a little bit, but yeah. <laughs> like repairable if something yeah. does happen to it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And that's kind of where, cause I, my 240 as well of like all the crazy builds and I'm actually trying to make it as simple as possible, mm -hmm. but like I bought the basically the most conservative origin kit you yep. can. And then I've got actually some factory arrow. I just, excuse me, just bought. I just want to keep it simple. Yeah. Like I don't want to go crazy because. Yeah, I know you've, you, you've told me your plans for that. I'm really excited for that. I, I'm on board with that 100%. I think that's going to look super sick. Thank you. Um, It'll be fun. So yeah, I can't wait to see that. Hopefully July is when I can start tearing into that and going crazy. <laughs> you finally get your kit. I got it. Yeah, I should get it in June. Um, I'll have factory arrow kit though, for sure. Yeah. Before then. But uh, I got to like figure out where to put all the glass because I have to pull the glass from the car. And I don't know. Where, yeah, I think I'm just gonna put it in my living room. I don't when you like when you repaint it. Yeah, because oh, yeah. I have to pull the windshield. <laughs> out the, I just have yeah. I'm pulling all the glass because there's a little rust around that yeah, I just have to fix. fix. But on that note, yeah, hope you guys have learned something today. I mean, <laughs> comment with what with what you have, but you know, building your cars for yourself is important because yeah, don't it, do it for other people. You're yeah, doing it for because it, like you brought up a good point too. Is like 
you're just gonna you're gonna finish it and be like, what did I build? I don't like it. I'm gonna sell it. Start over. Cycle repeats you're gonna, itself. If you're building for someone else and that other person isn't constantly telling you this thing's dope, I love it, it's so cool, <laughs> you're gonna want to get rid of it because yeah. that like that reinforcement gratification you got from them liking it it's will like the only stop. Real, like yeah, passion that you had for it or like you know connection you had to it. Exactly was the nice compliments and stuff. So. Yeah, build your car for yourself. I know it's kind of like a redundant statement, but you know, it's always a good reminder, I think, in 2022 to to have, you know, because I think it, it is really easy to fall into. I've fallen for it myself. Um, and it's always a thing to watch out for. And yep. you know, whether it's buying parts or not, it's more of just like how how do you feel about your car? Is it is it truly what you want? Exactly. Cool. cool. Well, thank you guys so much for listening, tuning in, watching, however you're consuming this podcast on gels. I'm Sam. And don't forget to check out Anobi Wheels over at AnobiWheels.com. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks, guys.